On this video, I'm gonna show you how to sell your bike on eBay. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to go to the eBay app after you download it. Um, I have it right here. So you're on the home page. Up at the top left, you have the little menu. Click that. If you look down at the bottom here, you can see where it says selling. All right, you want to click on selling. All right, and then you want to click on list an item. All right, so you click on list an item. Now you're going to just describe what you're listing. We're going to sell a Santa Cruz blur. All right, okay. All right, and just go for search here, and it gives you some, some recommendations here. And I would, I would actually do that. I would use one of the recommendations because, one, it fills in a lot of information for you, and it helps you find out how much bikes are going for right now. So I'm going to click this one that's right here, this orange one that says uh, Santa Cruz Blur Extra Large. Click on that. All right, as you can see there, you want to sell yours, so you click the blue button there. It says Sell Yours. Now you're going to go through the details of it. So we're going to sell a used one. All right. Now it pulls up here and you'll see it'll have where you can add some pictures. So click here. Uh, you want to select from your gallery and it's going to show you your last couple of pictures. I think it's like 12 or 13. Well, it's more than that. So it shows you a lot of pictures. So what you want to do is just go through, click all your pictures that you want to add to it. All right. And then you click upload. Now it will automatically upload this. All right, and you can click that back arrow and go ahead and start editing things while the pictures are uploading, which is way better than it was in the past. Now on title, your title, you wanna, I would include the year if you can. Um, so include the year, that way people know what they're, they're getting. Uh, and then the make and the model of it. This is not a new one, so you don't wanna have that there. Uh, you do wanna include the size of it though, so that way people know what they're looking at, the size, so they know if they wanna look into it more detail or not. Also, if you have components on it that are really good, let's say like, you know, some SRAM Eagle X01 or something like that, you want to add that too in the uh, in the listing. That helps it uh, uh, get discovered by people. So just add SRAM Eagle. You also can, you know, if you have carbon wheels, put, you know, carbon wheels. Uh, and a lot of this, what this helps with as well is it helps with the, uh, the algorithm. And I'll show you in a second. So go ahead and put that in there. Now, subtitle, you don't really have to have a subtitle. That's just if you want to add some more information in there. eBay does charge a little more for that. It's not a lot, but I think it's like 15 cents or 50 cents. I can't remember exactly, but it does charge for that. All right, now down here in item specifics, I don't put a lot of information here. Some of it will automatically be filled in based on what you have put into your title. So. Uh, click on item specifics. What I do with this is I usually want to make sure that I have the frame size. Also, I like to put the wheel size. All right. And then material, I like to do the material as well. That way people can see it real quickly. Now, everything else is, is really, in my opinion, kind of just you don't have to put it in there, but you can. Those are the big things that you want to put in is like the frame size, wheel size, material. All right. Uh, so we'll go to the next, and, and that's going to be the category. The category, you want to have it on you know, bicycles. You only want one category. If you pick more than one category, eBay will double charge you the fees. All right, so just do one category. Now description, eBay automatically fills in the description from your title. So you also want to include details of like what is actually on your bike, also any imperfections, any marks or anything like that, and be upfront with people. Don't try to hide something, you know, no one wants to be surprised uh, negatively when they get the bike from you. So list everything that you have on the bike. Also, if I were you, I would list the, the link to the site, the manufacturer site. So if people want to look into more detail on the bike, they can click and, and see that. Like let's say they want to see what kind of seat post it has, what size seat post. Obviously you don't have it listed here. You have the link, they can go and they can find it pretty quickly. Now pricing, there are several options on eBay with pricing. eBay owns the patent for auctions online. That's why no one else really has auctions online. So you can use the auction format if you want to. I really don't like the auction format, but I'll run through it real quick. You have a starting bid, which is obviously where people you know, start their bid. Uh, you have um, the duration. Usually if you're gonna do an auction, I would recommend going as long as you can. 
uh, you know, 10 days. That Sometimes eBay will charge you a little bit more for that. But the reason why I say 10 days is because you're going to get more exposure in those 10 days. Uh, you can also take offers from people. So you can actually allow it to people to do offers. You can also, you know, basically do no offers. It's up to you. Uh, you can set a reserve price. So let's say right now we have it at 1228 uh, you can do a reserve price here, and let's say you want, don't want to take any less than 2000 uh, So you can do that if you want to. Uh, that's an option. You can also schedule the start time as well. Uh, easy pricing is pretty cool. Uh, this allows you to lower your bid every time you have to relist it. So let's say that you know, you're starting it at 1228 and you know it doesn't sell in the 10 days. They will relist it for you and bring the price down 5%. Now, like I said... I don't really like the auction style uh, too much. I like the buy it now style. So I'll unclick the auction style here. All right, and then what it does, it gives you the option of the buy it now. Now, buy it now, you can see there's a trending price here. And this is pretty cool. eBay actually has included this recently. In the past, you'd mainly have to go in and see what the bike sold for. But if you click the little graph there, it will show you previous bikes and what they have have sold for now obviously you know we don't know this all the details as far as what they're built up with and everything but it gives you kind of a, a ballpark idea of, of what they are going for so that's pretty cool uh, now price you obviously can click on that and your buy it now price is a price that people are willing to pay right away and that's why I like buy it now because most people are used to Amazon now and everything else that's out there and they don't want to wait for their product they want it right away so if you're going to do buy it now do your research and see what the prices are going for. Okay. Now you do have more options here at the bottom. I would recommend clicking that and you can actually take offers from people. And I actually, I do this. I usually will allow people to do offers. Uh, and then when you click allow offers, you can actually set a minimum amount. So let's say you have it listed buy it now for you know $3,000, but you know, you don't want to take any less than $2,400. You can put $2,400, uh, and then what will happen is they will automatically decline any offer below $2,400. do have easy pricing. We buy it now. This is pretty cool. This is after 10 days, uh, it will bring the price down 5%. So you can do a scheduled start time here at the bottom. Uh, I don't usually do that. I know eBay does charge a little bit for that as well. Uh, let's say here that it's saying my price is $2,691. I believe I can get more than that because sometimes the algorithm will include frame sets instead of you know just uh, complete bikes so like I said do your research let's say I want to get $34.99 for this one okay all right and then offers I'm gonna say I don't want to go below you know 2800 no we'll just do that so there you are okay so you, you have your pricing here uh, and you know we have buy it now click, click the back arrow now you have delivery here this is where you set up your your shipping so you want to click on this and you want to put in your information, the package details and everything. Uh, we're going to say since it's a full bike, I don't have it packed up yet, but I shipped a lot of bikes in the past. So I kind of have an idea of what it's going to you know, weigh. We're going to say it's about 35 pounds and we'll throw the six ounces in there. And once again, this does not have to be exact. It does help eBay kind of come up with a price for your buyer. So, you know, you do have that. Length is going to be somewhere around 51 inches, width 10, height 25. Okay. Now, if you go back here, then it's going to have a shipping service. You click on that, and you have a list of shipping services here that you can pick. Uh, UPS and FedEx, if I'm selling a complete bike, those are the two I go with. All right. Um, and you notice here, too, be sure to look at shipping cost. See where it says free for buyer? That means that you have put free shipping on there. All right, so click that, and you can either, if you want to pay for it out of whatever you sell it for, you can, or you can pick, you know, basically the buyer pays for it based on the calculated shipping of eBay. The problem with this is eBay's calculator is sometimes wrong, so it will overinflate the price. So someone's bidding on your item, and it's saying that it's like $300 to ship it, and really it's going to be only $75. So Sometimes I don't like to use the calculator because it can inflate the numbers a little bit. Uh, so at the bottom you have buyer pays flat shipping. I usually do this and I'll put around 75, you know, 50 to 75 dollars uh, in there. If you're shipping across the country or somewhere far away, obviously it's going to be more than that. And you may lose a little bit, but hey, at least, you know, someone bought the bike. You can ship internationally if you want to. Bikes usually, I mean, you can do it. 
Obviously, if the buyer is willing to pay for it, you can ship internationally if you want to. But you got to go through and do the same details and everything. Also, and also at the bottom, you can do local pickup as well. Uh, so that's an option. Um, and then you have your preferences as far as uh, you know handling time, how, how long you're going to handle it, all that stuff. Usually, I don't uh, look at this. Once you set this up, you know, once you don't have to look at it anymore. But uh, that's just some ideas. You can actually do return policy. Uh, if you do a return policy where people, you're allowed to do a return, uh, eBay, the fees will be a little lower, uh, apparently. So, All right. Now, you can boost it if you want to, but this is going to cost a little bit extra. It's about a 3.7% rate. So if you sold it at you know $3,500, that's going to be $129 fee. So just as a heads up there. All right. And then you go down and you list your item. If you're doing a buy it now, uh, they do usually charge a little bit for listing it, and then you have a final value fee, and we'll talk about that now. Okay, so let's talk about some of the negatives of using eBay. Uh, the big negative is going to be the fees. All right, so eBay actually takes out a 9% fee on sporting goods, and everything cycling-related falls under sporting goods. So let's say we sold our bike for $3,000, so you're going to take out 9% of that. That's going to be $270 that goes to eBay. Now understand, this does not come out immediately. So eBay will basically keep up with everything you sell for a month, and then the next month, usually on the 15th, they will charge you this $270. So if you think, oh, I got $3,000 in my account, you really don't. Okay, it's going, to, it's going to hit you on the next month, so just give you a fair warning there. You also have PayPal fees. So a PayPal fee is roughly around... 3.5%, and this is what you're going to pay actually whenever you sell anywhere and you buy something with goods and services, <clears throat> you get paid this fee, you get a protection, so that's $105 there. Uh, so total amount coming out of your uh, amount there is going to be $375 uh, coming out of that $3,000, so, uh, so really you're going to come home with $2,625. So your options really are, do I sell it in another location such as Facebook or, you know, Pinkbike or something like that and just charge, you know, $200 less. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video beneficial, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Share it with any of your friends who are about to sell their bikes and we'll see you in the next video.